Next up, if you had Yaroslav Moloshko. Very good. <laughs> uh, and he'll be telling us why they love Prometheus, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me uh, and letting me speak, even though I have uh, hate and Prometheus in the same sentence. So, uh, who am I? Uh, I'm a system architect and uh, part-time DevOps uh, team lead at Anchor Free. And what Anchor Free is, is uh, our mission is to provide uh, secure and anonymous access to internet to all people in the globe. Basically, we are a VPN provider, one of the biggest. In and we are on the short list to be blocked on uh, when our country decided to to block anything. So we were using uh, a lot of monitoring solution uh, project. Our hotspot shield project is like 10 years old. And uh, uh, we approached monitoring from different angles. And uh, I would say it as my colleague said, uh, it looked like a mess. So uh, we set a couple of requirements to our new age monitoring solution. It had to be highly available. It had scaling up and down and out uh, without data loss, ease maintenance, long retention, friendly community. Everything must be promiscuous, right? And in 2016, we discovered that uh, it, it had zero. <laughs> Don't, don't kick me right now, <laughs> don't kick me out, <laughs> let me speak. <laughs> uh, so about high availability, uh, we discovered that even though you have, uh, you can have several Prometheus servers, you still have gaps in graphs. And uh, if, you, if you have stable, uh, stable platform, it is maybe acceptable to have one gap for one hour per month. But when you are tuning, and pr prior to 1.6, it was dark magic, uh, we were not able to, to like have continuous graph. Every day it was like some gaps, and our management was driving crazy because our CEO is so passionate about this deliverance, this free internet to everyone, that uh, we have this white... Uh, screens around the office, and if he sees some gap, he, we should call uh, an ambulance. So we, we <laughs> couldn't afford it. So horizontal scaling. Actually, uh, there is no such thing as scaling in Prometheus, but there is a sharding. And we discovered that host-based sharding doesn't work well. And federation server is actually, it's, it is not a single point of entrance to the data, but it is basically yet another Prometheus with some limited amount of uh, metrics. And actually, uh, when we tried to shard our data by node, we discovered that our ops guys had a hard time figuring out figuring out where data is. And actually, this was, uh, we were not alone. I, I'm happy that we uh, are not like the one who wants something strange. So ease of maintenance, uh, back to 1.6, when we were, uh, actually we start with 1.4. Uh, it was a dark magic of tuning. We had a lot of RAM. Uh, we, we were incrementing this uh, engine, storage engine, like uh, it was like one, then two. And it was like uh, not really easy if, if you start to have more than like 10 Prometheus server. It, it was like, especially if, if this has different hardware, SSDs, uh, uh, other disk or whatever. So, uh, but for one note, it worked very far, fine. Long retention period, and uh, right now it does support uh, reads and writes, but uh, back in that time, uh, 
uh, we had no chance of doing this. And uh, we figured out that X4 doesn't work well. Then we found XFS. And it was like all of the prob I, I believe if we hit all the problems Prometheus user could hit. So the community, what could be wrong, right? Uh, so we had HA proxy. And there is a pull request from 2015. And this pull request was not merged because Brian Brazil, I, I'm not pointing fingers, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Brian Brazil was going to write a different statistics for HA proxy. That was the reason why they didn't merge it. But for me, as a newcomer to the community, it looked like, come on, this pull request is for a year already, and it provides what I need, but nobody is merging it. Right? It was like weird. So we, we went in FluxDB. <laughs> 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 Three months later, <laughs> we changed our requirements to time series database, and we decided that we do not need long retention, we do not need anything, we just want it to be stable, fast, some human readable query language, and handle just our load. We do not want to handle like possible load in 10 years, just our. Because there should be another talk about in FluxDB, why we hate it. <laughs> I'm not keeping it. Uh, if you want, I, you can read it later. So uh, because we were using uh, in FluxDB for three months, all of our server team guys created all of these exporters or support uh, for in FluxDB, and we spend like a lot of resources and we decided, okay, let's use Telegraph. Let's use one exporter and uh, Prometheus. What could be wrong, right? And we discovered that don't use it with per service sharding because if Telegraph is down, you lose everything. If Telegraph is up, you have like bunch of metrics and if you share it by service, not by node, because node doesn't work with, with, uh, uh, with federation, um, to, to figure out where your data is, sorry. So uh, if you share it by service, you, uh, you cannot actually distinguish where, what uh, data you can get from the Telegraph and you eat your bandwidth, eat your CPU, and it just done. So why we love it? First of all is output format. Uh, I do not know who created that, but this is uh, second most loud uh, format uh, I've seen. And uh, basically, we could, we, as soon as we introduced Prometheus and we said like, okay, this is final. It is going to be Prometheus. No more other monitoring solutions. Our developers started using uh, this output and we changed all our infrastructure to use this output format even for non-Prometheus tasks. It, it, it became like a standard output for, for, for read-only API. Why, I will tell you later. From QL, uh, this is the, the number one thing I love about Prometheus because of this. How would you offset a data from yesterday, right? With uh, Influx, actually it is a capacitor. You, you needed to write this fancy uh, query with uh, Prometheus, it is just, and it's done. So with Prometheus, we were able to unify dashboards, alerts, and deep dive analysis. The operation guys, SRE guys, were able to dig deeply, see graphs, and all with one tool. And this is just amazing. I, I, probably I cannot overestimate how, how it changed our uh, operation speed, but actually, this is amazing. So Prometheus become first point of analysis. 
previously, um, I didn't state that uh, we have several thousand of nodes. And previously, whenever you need to figure out what went wrong with that node or what is the software installed on that particular node, you had to go or you, if you have it, uh, this task for some bunch of nodes, you use Ansible or SileStack or whatever you have. Right now, we export everything in Prometheus. And first, when somebody asks you, like, OK, what, what is installed there, you just go to Prometheus and you're like, doesn't work, shit, I need to do this Ansible. <clears throat> so, anti-blocking. Uh, you know, we were using, uh, we are on the short list of blockage by most of the countries, and we spend most of our, our development and research and development resources in anti-blocking uh, field. And uh, prior to Prometheus, we had, um, uh, Hadoop with all of this uh, batch processing and we had like a lot of uh, reaction, huge reaction time uh, from the time when we got blocked to the time when we trigger it like, oh, this, this got blocked. Uh, right now we are changing this pipeline and uh, had this um, Hadoop in, in computations is uh, metrics in real time, but uh, we had the six months of uh, introducing Prometheus for this. So we had basically four metrics, main metrics. It is, uh, it's, it is like one metric, but uh, different dimensions. So it could be a country, server IP, user connected, user platform, Android, Windows, whatever, and domain it connected, if it has domain. So uh, I took a naive approach and uh, tail file, then calculated, set the labels, country, platform, whatever. Use counter type as it should be because it is a counter. And it was a complete fail because we got like uh, almost 3 billion, met uh, three billion uh, metrics. Uh, so our Prometheus server I dedicated for this particular time uh, died in a couple of minutes. Uh, so I was thinking, like, what can I do <laughs> better? So I introduced uh, TTL of the message. So on, on the exporter side, we were calculating the country and, uh, and the platform and all these metrics. And then uh, if we do not increment it uh, within five minutes, then we remove this from cache. And it uh, actually helped because whenever user, previously whenever user connected to the server, uh, it remains there forever. And uh, because we have different host names as well, so this metric could be like in increased a lot this cardinality. But with five minute cache, we might get, we might not get this user to that fraction of, ser of servers and uh, it, it is more or less safe. Uh, it worked somehow. Uh, but we we were blind whether it is really working or it is uh, or like or not because Hadoop had completely different uh, data. Hadoop has absolute values, so uh, probably Brand Brazil will kick me in right now. But uh, I decided to actually do gauge and even though it is counter, but in order to fill our um, need in some reference data with Hadoop so that we can have it, uh, we calculate this with uh, five minute uh, batches. We calculate this data and then we create uh, yet another uh, intermediate format, and then our exporter is actually showing these five minutes uh, samples. And uh, it was a success. 
right now uh, this particular task is um, is done by uh, two nodes, uh, 93 gigabyte of RAM each, and we got like 80k um, ingested samples per second, and uh, it is only four million time series. So. Uh, Result, uh, we have a complete visibility of per country uh, anti-blocking. We decreased the amount of time we spent on uh, analyzing when we got blocked uh, from 24 hours to 30 minutes. In, and it's not because of Prometheus, but because of our ops guys. Uh, we got alerts and uh, we we can theoretically handle it with one server, but we would not have high availability. Uh, instead of petabytes of Hadoop, uh, right now we moving towards Hadoop anyway, but uh, still we can do it. So this is look like this. Uh, our graph for this is for Ukraine, I believe. Uh, we got IPs, we, we got uh, IP ranges, uh, domains, we got uh, platforms, and everything is done by Prometheus. That is it. That was fast, right? <laughs>